Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From ancient helmets that might be meant to look like a boar's head to sad sacrifices with unclear intentions, here are eight mysterious and incredible archaeological finds. Number 8. Tomb of the Silver Dragons Just recently, a number of archaeologists working in Mongolia unearthed two incredible ornate tombs that were constructed to serve as the final resting place of some of the nobility within the nomadic Xiongnu Empire. Although not discussed as often as the Chinese Empire, they were around the same regions at the same time. In particular, the Xiongnu Empire maintained control of the eastern part of the so-called Eurasian steppes from the 3rd century well into the 1st century AD. Naturally, since both the Xiongnu and the Chinese's Han Dynasty were fighting for control of similar regions, they were often at each other's throats. They were pretty much in constant war with one another. The Xiongnu became such a problem for the Han Dynasty that they built a big wall to fortify themselves. In effect, this became a part of the Great Wall of China. Many parts of China's Great Wall came into being in a similar way, in an effort to fend off enemies or at least intimidate them. The tombs that these Mongolian archaeologists uncovered were filled to the brim with extraordinary goodies. In one tomb, they found a number of boxes that each housed fine silver jewelry, belt accessories made from jade, and some incredibly detailed dragon figurines that were gilded with silver. In the other tomb, they also found equestrian ornaments that each depict some kind of unicorn deity. This discovery is sure to give researchers further insight into the Xiongnu Empire. Number 7. Scarabray on the coast of the Orkney Islands of Scotland, there is a village called Scarabray that was first inhabited sometime around 5,000 years ago. That means that it's older than both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. And even though it's not talked about as much as either of those two sites, that's not because it's any less interesting. In fact, in terms of preservations, it's one of the best settlements we have from the Neolithic era in European history. Almost everything in Scarabray is still standing. The village consists of a number of homes made from stone that are still there to be explored. There are even a number of beds made from stone, although you'd have to imagine that they wouldn't have been too comfortable. Scarabray also features Scotland's oldest toilet. Clearly, this settlement had a lot going for it, especially compared to some of the similar sites that date to around that same time period. So who lived in Scarabray? It is believed it was a group of farmers and hunters whose combined efforts enabled them all to stay in one place for a long time. However, for some reason that no one quite understands, everyone left Scarabray in about 2500 BC. What caused everyone to up and leave without any warning? There aren't any bones there, nor are there signs that there were any wars going on, so the end remains a mystery. Number 6. Cliff Palace If you're ever in the area, you should definitely check out Cliff Palace, which is nestled inside of the Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. It's well named. It's pretty much an entire city that's been built into the side of a mountain. It was the largest cliff dwelling in North America in the 1200s, built by the ancestral Puebloans, also known as the Anasazi, a group of people native to the Four Corners region of the U.S., where the states of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona connect. There were over 150 rooms inside of Cliff Palace, built using sandstone, mortar, and wooden beams. Families lived together and used ladders to get up and down the cliffs. There are nearly 600 cliff dwellings like this that remain, most with a kiva, a special round room used for ceremonies and rituals. Some of the dwellings date back almost 1,000 years old, and no one knows why the Puebloans moved into the canyons, but perhaps in this position they were more secure and closer to water. These larger cliff houses are like ancient apartment buildings preserved by the cliffs. Around 1300 AD, everyone left, although no one really knows why. Perhaps a combination of factors such as the growing population, drought, and overhunting forced them to migrate. The site was lost for 700 years, but the story goes that some cowboys looking for some lost cattle found it and word got out. Explorers raided the site and left everything bare. The structures have also been exposed to the elements. Luckily, it is now protected by the government and you can go explore it for yourself. Have you ever been here or do you want to go? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Apples who would have thought archaeologists would study fruit? You might think that apples have been around for as long as we have, but the history of apples is actually a long and winding journey between continents. Robert Spengler, an archaeobotanist, which is pretty much an archaeologist but with respect to botanical matters, recently completed a survey which covered a boatload of archaeological and historical info, in which he argues that ancient humans had an even more interesting relationship with apples than we might have previously thought. 
He thinks that when humans first discovered apples, they ended up spreading apple seeds around the world. In this way, they were acting a lot like the mastodons of antiquity would have behaved around apples. They were also thought to be attracted to apples and are in large part responsible for the dispersal of apple trees around the world. Apples aren't too good at growing on their own. One bad apple can ruin the bunch. So they need animals like humans and mastodons to carry them around the world. Additionally, scientists have been able to trace the existence of apples back to one region on the planet, Almaty, a city in Kazakhstan. And Almaty wears its apple badge proudly. There's even an apple fountain in the middle of town. Now you can find the last wild apple trees in the Tian Shan Mountains in Kazakhstan. They serve as a testament to the strangely storied history that apples have experienced over the years. Number 4. Etruscan Boar Helmet In 1964, a group of curators at the Harvard Art Museum came upon a piece that they'd had in their collection for quite some time, even though they don't know how it got there. Take a look at this strange piece. What does it look like to you? Some experts have identified this as a helmet that's been made to look like the head of a wolf, although the art museum's website claims that it's a boar's head. Whatever it is, it's clearly been through a lot. Experts estimate that this helmet comes from sometime during the 5th or 6th century BC and has its origins in the Etruscan civilization. Given that it comes from the Etruscans, it makes sense that it would be a boar's head. Their art often included depictions of boars. But knowing its period and location of origin doesn't take away from the enigmatic nature of this piece. What was it used for? Why did it pass so long through the generations? And how did it end up in the museum? The website states that the helmet likely had some sort of ritualistic purpose. It appears to have been repaired many times over the course of its history, even into the modern era. The only things that we have to compare it to are the depictions of boar's heads that were often fashioned onto Etruscan chariots, as no other helmets like this have been found in good condition. It could be the case that many of the features of this helmet could have been fashioned from pieces that were originally fastened onto the chariots, but it must have been very impressive to behold. Number 3. Medieval Female Scribe a team of researchers wanted to look at plaque on the teeth of ancient skeletons. Not my personal preference, but what they found was actually pretty incredible and surprising. As they looked at the chemical composition of a woman buried in the 11th or 12th century in Germany from a religious community, they realized that her teeth had blue plaque. But what was it? After a very long investigation involving physicists, historians, archaeologists, and a micro-ramen spectroscopy revealed that the plaque was lapis lazuli a very rare stone mined from a single mine in what is now Afghanistan during medieval times. It was ground up to make ultramarine, a pigment used in painting medieval manuscripts. It was more valuable than gold. So the question now was, how did it get into her mouth? Christina Warriner, a molecular archaeologist at Harvard University and the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History said, we wondered how on earth a woman at this early date, in a kind of backwater location, came into contact with this incredibly expensive mineral. She was most likely a scribe, whose job it was to produce fine manuscripts. For a long time, contemporary historians have thought that women didn't play much of a role in medieval bookmaking, but this adds to a lump of evidence that's upending that preconception. It appears that women simply didn't sign their names on their work out of humility. Warriner said that we do have a few surviving manuscripts written by women around the same time period and they have been using handwriting recognition to uncover other works. Who knows how many other female artists and authors might be out there, just waiting for scientists to look at their teeth. Number 2. Angkor Angkor is an archaeological site in northern Cambodia with a rich history behind it. It is one of the most important archaeological sites in Southeast Asia, stretching over 154 square miles and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was home to two religions, Hinduism and Buddhism, and is considered the largest religious monument on Earth. Angkor is famous for being the capital of the Khmer Empire between the 9th and 15th centuries AD. This is arguably the most illustrious period in the entire history of Cambodia. However, eventually the power of the Khmer Kingdom waned, and by 1431, armies from Ayutthaya captured Angkor, and many of the people living there left. In the 12th century, King Suryavaraman II of the Khmer Empire began construction on an enormous temple complex. The rock came from quarries nearby, but scientists have long wondered how the bricks used to build Angkor Wat were brought to the site. Five million tons of sandstone blocks were used to build the city, and it looks like the mystery may have finally been solved. Ancient builders used a network of canals connecting the quarries to the temple so they could float the rocks down on rafts, making everything much easier. 
Angkor Wat was built as a symbolic representation of Mount Meru, which in Hindu mythology is the sacred mountain standing at the center of the universe. Over time, the ancient city was reclaimed by nature, and it was rediscovered in the 1840s. Situated in the middle of the jungle, the vast array of trees and vines began to take over the once illustrious city. Now the temple area has been taken over by the forest, although we still aren't sure why everyone left. Some have suggested that it was not only warfare, but a quickly changing climate that brought Angkor to its knees. More recently, laser scans have revealed a whole network of ancient cities in Cambodia. Thanks to LiDAR, we now have a new understanding of what the Khmer Empire looked like at the apex of its power, as well as newly discovered lost cities hidden by the jungle. Number 1. Mass Sacrifice in Peru in 2019, a group of Peruvian archaeologists excavating in Pampa La Cruz, Peru, uncovered the skeletal remains of 227 children who had been sacrificed. Of the bodies they discovered, they estimated that the children's ages varied between 5 and 14 years old. Although this isn't the first collection of child sacrifices discovered, it's definitely the largest. Archaeologists believe this was part of three mass sacrificial events interpreted as offerings by the Chimu people in response to El Niño events around 1250 AD. In addition to the children's remains, they found nearly 400 llamas, and archaeologists don't think they're done either. They're expecting to find more remains as they continue the excavation process. At the very least, they know that these sacrifices belong to the Chimu civilization, who inhabited northern Peru between 1200 to 1400 AD. At the time, they held immense power over the region, until the Incas took over. The Chimu worshipped Xi, who was a god representative of the moon. They felt that the moon was more important than the sun, spiritually speaking, since it was around both during the night and during the daytime. They also seemed to know that it helped control the tides and believed it affected coastal weather. Archaeologist Gabriel Prieto of the University of Florida believes the earliest Pampa La Cruz sacrifice may have had a political purpose. He says that it's intriguing that this first sacrificial event occurred at exactly the same time the Chimu were conquering people such as the Lambayeque, who lived in the valleys to the north. It's fascinating to imagine that the victims may have been Lambayeque citizens brought here to celebrate those victories. According to archaeology.org, another possible interpretation is that the sacrifice was meant to honor Taikanamo, the legendary founder of the Chimu, who is said to have come from the sea and walked south to found the Chimu capital of Chan Chan around 1000 AD. Pampa La Cruz overlooks the exact spot where he is thought to have landed. Thanks again for watching, everybody! What do you think is the most mysterious archaeological discovery? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're there, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe! See you soon! Bye!